Starting July 1st, 2019, new ammo laws are gonna take effect in California. We're gonna try to wade through some of that today. Thanks for joining us on Shoot of the Series again. I'm Ed Thorell from Firearms Education and Training. Today, I'm joined by my partner in crime, good old Bill from Brass and Bass. And I don't mind telling you, Bill, um, I'm pretty confused with the new ammo laws. There's a lot of disinformation out there, a lot of rumors running wild. And I'm hoping you can kind of clear through some of the fog and kind of set us all straight on what to expect on July 1. Oh, absolutely. So um, a lot of the information out there, a lot of people are asking or saying, you know, we've got we've to register our ammunition. We've got to... Um, you know, tell people or tell them exactly how much we're buying, we're going to be limited to how much we can buy, all that kind of stuff. A lot of misinformation out there. So it's not really an ammo registration as much as it's just a straight background check. We're just checking to make sure that criminals are not buying ammunition. So um, when, we're, when you're coming in and we're doing these checks, it, it's just going to be a background check. So as of right now, um, the, the Senate Bill 1235 that received, you know, was passed a while back. And that's uh, Stats 2016, Chapter 55, and then the ammunition and uh, the ammunition Proposition 63, which there's a lot of other things in in with that as well. And that was approved by the voters uh, November 8th, 2016, as a safety act for all. Um, so with that, as of right now, commencing July 1st, with uh, specified exemptions on ammunition can only be sold to a person who has information matching and entry in the automated firearm system. So what's that? That's meaning is you come in you make a, to make a purchase for ammunition and you're not buying a gun that day, uh, you're gonna have to have a background check done. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna gather your driver's license, we're gonna take that, we're gonna enter it into the, the gross entry system just like we would for a firearms purchase, and they're checking to make sure that you have a firearm registered to your name <clears throat> at that current address. If not, they're saying that it's gonna be a higher fee. <clears throat> How much that fee's gonna be, we're not sure yet. Possibly $20. Maybe more, maybe less. We don't know exactly. Um, if you do have a, a firearm registered to you at that current address, it's supposedly only supposed to be a dollar or so. Uh, all that stuff is still kind of being, you know, finalized and everything like that. So with that, um, if you're just making that single transaction and you're making that through a, a, an ammunition dealer, then that's all the cost is going to be. Um, for that, <clears throat> ammunition can be sold to a person who was approved by the department. To receive a firearm whose licensed firearms dealer is in ammunition is delivered to the person the same transaction as the firearm. So what that is saying is you come in to make a purchase for the a firearm and you come in to pick it up the day that you, you come in that day that you start the background check or the day that you come in to pick up, probably the day you come to pick up because that's when we actually get the verification um, that you're, you're clear to, to own the firearm, then you can pick up ammunition that day as well. And that won't include an extra fee because so you, you've already been background checked. Um, that's one thing that's kind of a, a bonus that as you're making that, that firearms purchase, you can go ahead and purchase ammunition on your pickup and, and you're okay. You don't have to do an extra fee or anything like that. <clears throat> um, and then also uh, commencing J July 1st, an ammunition vendor, vendor shall electronically submit. And that's what I was talking about with the ID. We're going to swipe it just like with the others. <clears throat> if it doesn't swipe, we have to type in the information and go from there. Um, some of the exemptions for this law our uh, law enforcement are exempt and then also COE holders which is a certificate of eligibility so any person that has gone through the background check typically guys like that are uh, ammunition vendors or people that work in gun stores or within that community that do di different things within that and COE is like I say certificate of eligibility to own possess or sell firearms or ammunition um, and then uh, let's see here we're going to go, the information shall remain confidential, so on and so forth, just like the usual things that they do. Um, and then within this, because it's taken so long, this is a, it's as authorized by the bill, the department is currently drafting regulations that will specify additional rules applying or applicable to the purchase of the transfer of ammunition. So things within that, that's saying that when the bill was passed, they said, hey, we want, to, we want this to be in effect we want people to be background checked, but we don't know how we're going to implement it, who's going to be affected exactly, and who's going to be exempt, and, you know, things like this that they have to go in and, and figure out, and then also the fees and fines and all that. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of places out there that are giving a lot of misinformation, and they're saying, 
oh, there's a countdown to ammo getting, you know, you know, ammunition registration. And again, there is no registration. They don't want to know how much you're buying. They don't want to know what caliber you're buying. They don't want to know how or how much or any of that stuff. All they want to know is that the person purchasing is not a criminal. Now, on top of that, um, it is simply a check here in California. It doesn't check nationally. The, the national database, the NICS system, they said, absolutely not. We don't want to have anything to do with this. It's too much. We don't have the manpower. We don't have the time. We don't have the resources. So this is all on you, California. You want to do this? Have fun. Um, so you know, within that, it's going to check, you know, your basic stuff that it does here, just like for a firearms purchase. You know, if you owe a bunch of back child support or, you know, a bunch of court fines or fees, there is a potential that you could be denied. Um, and it, that's just, that's just how they've set it forth. This isn't us. Of course, this is the, this is the legislature. This is also, you know, people that voted made this happen. So, you know, just because it's in effect doesn't mean you have to stay silent, you know, get out there, contact your legislatures, you know, let them know, Hey, we don't like this. We want it to change, you know, keep your, your voices heard. That's what we got to do. Um, there's a lot of lawsuits that are out there by the NRA, the California rifle pistol association and the FPC that we're trying to get this stopped or put it into abatement like they did with the, the, the magazine ban that they did uh, last year. So, you know, all that kind of stuff's trying to happen and, and make this stuff kind of stop. So, um, you know, like I said before, you know, a lot of problems with these laws that, that they get put into play and they say, hey, this is, this is bad. We don't want this anymore, but they don't know how they're going to implement it or how they're going to freaking put it into effect and how they're going to enforce it. You know, that's some of the biggest things. And, you know, that's, again, something that we need to do as as voters, we need to get out there and say, hey, we don't want these laws to just be written. And then you you tell us how it's going to happen. It should all be already in there so that when it's done, we get to see also, hey, this is what's bad, what's good, how it's going to be implemented and who's gonna, who's it going to affect and, you know, how you guys are going to enforce it. You know, that's the biggest thing is how it's going to be enforced. So um, with that, again, you know, the the. Uh, there is no registration. They don't want to know how much. They're not limiting us to how much we can buy. It's just simply making sure that criminals are not purchasing ammunition in a gun store, which we all know that that's not going to happen anyway, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think, you know, some of the upsides, you know, there's a lot of misinformation that people were going to have to apply for a license to buy ammunition. And there was a lot of speculation that you were going to have to have another card like the firearm safety card right, that you yeah. were going to have to present. It's it's nice that we aren't going to have to um, submit to another uh, background check, like if we were doing a DR uh, a DROS, and that everything is going to be wired into your driver's license, and that whether you're buying an ammo, uh, a box of ammo, a case of ammo, or a pallet of ammo, you're going to go through the same process and if you already own a gun to that address, it's going to be a very minor fee, right, which is yeah. it's going to be more of an inconvenience. But I think a lot of this has really been blown out of proportion from the misinformation. Absolutely. Yeah. So now and do keep in mind that the, 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 the fee that they're going to charge is per transaction. So now if you make a purchase in that, that morning and and this is. From what I've been told from a field rep that I talked to, you know, kind of get some clarification. If you make a purchase that morning, you go out to the range, you shoot, and, you know, you shoot all that ammunition, you decide, you know what, I want to go get some more. Uh, you come back into the same gun shop, they recognize you, and you uh, make another purchase. They're not supposed to be charging you a second fee. It's supposed to be one time per transaction, but if it's within, within a reasonable amount of time, you know, you, you can come in and make another purchase. Hey, we know you just made a purchase you're obviously good for the for that then we can go ahead and do that again that's yeah right. so yeah exactly a reasonable amount of time you know exactly excellent well, hey we appreciate your time absolutely thanks absolutely. for thanks for keeping up on this oh, yeah it's fun for the, <laughs> for the rest of us that don't have all day to spend on this yeah anyway if you want to get involved you're going to see the information in the links for the organizations that are opposing this don't sit by idly and let this happen. Let your voices be heard. Um, we'd like to thank uh, our good friends here at Brass and Bass for inviting us in. Um, we'd also like to thank our subscribers for sticking with us and helping us get good traction. Uh, be sure to like, be sure to share, be sure to subscribe, and for instant notifications, hit that little bell. Once again, thanks for coming in. Y'all take care.